What's going on guys, it's Sasiata, I'm a Pokemon ROM hacker, and I'm going to be showing you today how you can rip ground textures and repeat other repeating textures from a Pokemon game such as Black 2 and White 2. This is going to be a four part series and this is the first episode, so uh, if you've gotten sent to this by another video, definitely watch this first. This is the simplest way to rip a texture. Um, or make your own tile and we're gonna get into more complicated versions of this as we go into the next part of the series Let's go ahead and get started on the most simple way to rip textures from black and white too All right to get started We're going to need to know how to use PDSMS, which is the mapping software that you will use for any DS map um, That you want to make and insert into a game such as heart gold soul silver black one two etc platinum um, what you're going to want to do is first download this and get it set up. I have a separate video for how to do that, so you definitely want to watch that first. It will be linked in the description in case you haven't done that before. Um, we're eventually going to be adding our tiles into here, uh, but first what we want to do is actually find the tiles in the game. And so to do that, we're going to need a different tool. We're going to be using something called CTR Map. If you haven't used that before, I'm going to have a link in the description for where to download this. And you're going to want to download um, not only the executable, but also the plugin. So the plugin is the CTR map uh, V. And so when I run CTR map for the first time, I'm going to want to go to global plugin manager, hit launch, and I'm going to in click install plugin. And I'm just going to double click on the CTR map 5 V, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to hit OK. And once you do that, everything is good to go. You just need this to run the software. And then once you do that, you can just go into CTR map, hit launch. In order to get these tiles from uh, Black 2, we're gonna have to have the ROM somewhere. And we're just going to locate where it is, click add ROM. So it says source ROM path, I'm gonna hit browse. And I'm just gonna go into where I have it kept. For me, it's right here. I'm gonna hit open, I've already done this before, so that's all right. And it will do this, just gonna hit confirm, and it will extract it to a uh, folder. And from there, what we're going to do is we're going to go to projects, go to file, create new project, and we're going to just type in the project path. For me, I just call it like black to project or something, whatever you want to call it. And it'll put it in the CTR map folder and then just click the game path that corresponds to the game you want. For me, it's black to vanilla and you're just going to initialize project. Once that happens, you can click on the project for that corresponding game. I have one for black one and black two since there's different areas in them and I'm just gonna open it up and it will start it up. <clears throat> so you'll be met with this blue screen and what you're gonna wanna do is go to zone loader and find the area that corresponds to the texture or the tile or whatever you wanna rip. So for our purposes, we're gonna look at Necrine library. So this is area 598 and we're gonna want to grab the floor texture. So this area has a lot of really cool stuff in it that you can use such as these staircases, uh, I should mention if you want to walk around, you use WASD, and if you want to switch to top down, you hit F5, and you can use middle click and left click to uh, scroll around. So for now, uh, there's a bunch of stuff we can get from this or that we're going to do in future tutorials, but for this one, we're just going to get the floor texture, and it's a just a re simple repeating tile texture, but there's plenty of those in this game, and this is generic, it will work for any sort of floor texture. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, and we're going to go to Serialize Scene, um, and I'm just going to call this uh, Nacreen Library, and it'll save it as a CMIF format, and that's just something that uh, CTR Map can read and open in Creative Studio, so we're going to hit save. And I'm going to go into the Tools uh, tab here and click on Creative Studio, and now I'm going to go up here and hit Import and Merge CMIF Scene, and I'm going to scroll down to Nacreen Library and open this. We go over to models and click this button here. There's a bunch of different things you can open up, uh, assorted different uh, NPCs and stuff, but the one that we want is right here. And this is this is gonna actually have the library. So to scroll up and down, you right, hold right click to go uh, rotationally, you hold left click, and if you wanna zoom in or go to the left or in or out, it's WASD. And so you can see that this is the area we want, and I'm just gonna right click on it and hit export. I'm going to save it as a Wavefront OBJ. This is what we're going to be inserting into Blender to then rip the tile from. So I'm going to just call this NAC Green Library and it's going to save as an OBJ. So I hit save and I'm just going to hit export. Okay, great. 
So the next tool we're going to need is Blender. If you do not have Blender already, um, you can download it. It's a really easy download. Just go, I think, to like blender.com. I'll have it linked in the description. You can just get the most recent version and it'll work just fine. So we're going to open up Blender. Uh, we're going to hit a new general and just make ourselves a new uh, file. And so I'm just going to hit delete on this cube that it always makes. And then we're just going to import our obj file that we just extracted. So I'm going to go to wherever I have that saved, and mine is called natgreenlibrary.obj. might take you a little while to find this the first time, but that's okay. So I'm going to import this thing, and you'll notice that it's really, really big and maybe looks a little bit weird. So if you've never used Blender before to, uh, to rotate the image, you can hold middle click and move the mouse. If you want to translate it left and right, up and down, it's shift and middle click. All right, so uh, zooming in obviously is just scroll wheel. There's a lot of hotkeys in Blender and I'm only gonna be going over the ones we need today. So if we want to see the textures, we hit Z, hold Z and click on material preview and this will render what it looks like. It might look a little bit weird, but don't worry about that. It just is the way Blender renders it. Okay, so let's say we want the texture that's on the ground. Uh, the first thing we have to do for any tile ripping is scale everything. So I'm gonna hit A to um, to grab every single object piece, and I'm going to hit S to scale it down. You notice how it like moves towards the origin. I'm just gonna click anywhere, and then we wanna precisely change it in the resize menu to 0.0625. This is 1 16th of the original size because CTR map exports things too big. Okay, so once we do this, it's properly sized. And because we're going to be reusing this later, I actually want to save it as a uh, Nacreen library. So this is the Blender file, not the OBJ. They're different. So Nacreen library. So I'm going to hit save. And we're going to come back to this uh, in future videos for different things to rip. Okay, so if I want just the tiles from the ground, I can click on them and it will highlight everything that shares that texture. Uh, this is called a visibility group. You'll notice up here, if I scroll down, it says IN20 Yuka 01. Basically, it's everything that corresponds to this texture in this area. And if I want to only look at this texture, I can hit Control I to select the inverse and then hit delete to delete everything else. You'll notice it looks kind of weird in some places. That's totally fine. We're not actually going to need this uh, Area, this area by itself, what we're going to do is actually create our own texture from it. So we're going to hit Z here to go into top down mode. And then I'm going to hit, go into uh, edit mode by hitting tab. And so if you don't, if that doesn't work for you for some reason, just go into edit mode uh, by this drop down right here. Let's go into face mode and then we're going to click add and we're going to add a plane. So this is going to make a new plane that has the same texture as this, it will just automatically default to whatever texture is remaining. And since we only have one texture left in the file, this is a super easy way to do it. Uh, I want it to be one meter large because that's the size of the tile in the actual Pokemon game. And I'm going to shift it up 0.5 in X and in Y so that it's perfectly axis aligned. I'm just going to hit enter. And now we can zoom in. You'll notice that this is uh, exactly one tile. Okay, great. So looks pretty normal. It looks the same as the other pieces. And now what we want to do um, to get rid of everything else is we're just going to click on this guy, hit control I again and delete everything else. And we're gonna delete all the faces. So now we're just left with this one tile. And now this tile is going to be the same ground texture that we want to use in our own game. So I'm going to go into file export hit Wavefront OBJ, and we're going to use the forward axis as Y and up axis as Z. Make sure you change that, otherwise it'll be oriented incorrectly in the game and it'll look really weird. And I'm just gonna call this Nacreen Library uh, Floor. I, as you can see, I've ripped many, many tiles, so naming them something reasonable is a good practice. So Nacreen Library Floor sounds great. And now we're going to go into PDSMS and add this tile in. So let's say I want to add this to a map I'm already working on, or I'm adding it to a fresh map. It doesn't really matter. The process is the same. I'm just going to go to this area over here as a little testing ground, and I'm going to go into my tile list editor. And so this is going to basically be the place where I can modify any tiles I have or add new ones. For me, I want to just click add tiles. 
and it comes up with this box. For us, we've already scaled things down, so we don't need to worry about that, and we've already exported things correctly in Blender, so we don't need to flip Y and Z, so just hit OK. And we're gonna go into the folder that we saved this OBJ file in, and uh, I'm just gonna open an Acre library floor, and if we did everything correctly, we can scroll down, and here it is. So let's try placing this tile down and see what happens. So if I place it down, voila, great. So great, we have this repeated texture and that is the flooring that we wanted. Now, uh, there's only one thing that we need to change because this could go very, very wrong. If you click on the wireframe, you'll notice that each of these is their own individual tile and they each have a polygon. So that's not great. This is 56 polygons for just a floor. That's a lot. And if you start making more complicated maps, your limit is around 1200 polygons and you will hit that very quickly. And there's a super easy way to optimize this. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to Tileless Editor. Let's scroll down to our tile that we just added. And let's uh, go to X Tileable and Y Tileable. And then assign it a global mapping texture. And the scale is going to be 1. Let's just hit Apply. And then if we do that, you'll notice that it all merges into 1. And so if we look at this, we just reduced this by uh, 55 tiles, uh, 55 polygons, sorry. Uh, that is very helpful. And you'll notice if I expand it, it will automatically um, tile it for us in the most optimal way possible. And so even fitting this entire uh, air, 32 by 32 area, we only have 35. Um, we could further fill this in and you'll notice that it optimizes it down to 16 polygons, which is great. So you can make any sort of floor texture this way. You could go to another area in black and white, and then you can export it the exact same way. All right, so I hope that helped you. I'm going to be doing a couple more videos in the series, getting more complicated tiles out of the game. Obviously, floors are pretty straightforward. You just make a plane and slap it into PDSMS with a global texture. Uh, we're going to be getting into other things in the next episode, such as how to get arbitrarily shaped objects like bookshelves or ice spikes or something else. And then we're going to be working on how to get uh, individual like walls or other things that need to be tiled in the X or Y direction. All right, so that's been it for me. I'm Sauciata. Uh, if this video helps you, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed because I'm going to be doing more of this in the future and I'd love to make sure you get notified when I do. Um, I hope you have a great day and happy hacking.